Oh, he's getting it now. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Heavy Metal Customs. Of course, today, we're getting back on the 78 Dodge Warlock project. And we're going to start off with some electrical. I'll show you some of the other stuff I've done uh, here in a bit. i got all the wires done in the back, cleaned up, wire loomed. I mean, you got to make it look nice, you got to do it right, and with wire loom and the proper tape, you know, it's pretty much weatherproof for the most part. Better than just hanging wires, that's for sure. But what we're doing now, we're under the hood. Let me bring you up here closer and show you what we're into. All right, what we're going to do is go ahead and get these two set up. This is for our Holly Sniper EF5. Uh, if you'll see more of that, Check out part one of the EV-5, and hopefully part two will be coming up soon. But we're going to get these ready. Also have another electrical here that comes out to the grill. And what this is, this is a little trickle charger that he can hook up at any time. We'll go ahead and have it hooked up. And he brought a amp with a little sub to go behind the... Uh, seat in here so we have some power cable that we've got to get it hooked up. Uh, hopefully you can see this. I've already put the uh, fuse, it's a little uh, it's a crutch field, fuse right here. So we'll run our hot wire from here to here and then from there inside and on in. The first things first, we want to get these two fuel injection wires ready for their rock and roll debut. Get them skinned back. Alright. And of course some heat shrink. Always do the heat shrink. It's just a good idea. It looks nice and it makes for a better, safer connection. And I've got just a couple of large loops. I'll show you all how we're going to do these here in a minute. Go ahead and get these crimped on. Alright. I like that. They were just perfect size, ain't they? I uh, know they're non insulated, but I didn't have any uh, insulated ones. But that is why we have the heat shrink. Exactly. Alright. You do your wires up. Some people use a heat gun or something. Uh, me. I'm not going to get my heat gun out just for this. Well, no cheap cigarette lighter will do. And you can see that stuff, it will just conform to whatever you heat it to. Hopefully, y'all can see that okay. Get a little heat on it and turn it. And you got a nice solid connection. Ain't that pretty? Red hot. Black as ground. Yeah, it's got lucky having been no fine little piece of black. Alright. We like to say them two will go on there. Now, <coughs> what we've got, uh, the owner of this was smart. He got this battery here. It's a top post and a side post. So, I just grabbed a couple of uh, side post terminals here. And what we're going to do get all of these. Yeah, this is going to be one of the things uh, 
probably easier said than done things. But I want to get, let's go ahead and get some of this rolled out. We have one, two, three hots that we need to get in here. Yeah, one of them's way down here. I just want to put them in the in there like so. That there is your general idea. That's why I went and grabbed a uh, side terminal because I thought this right here would work out for the best. Uh, let me see here. We'll get these all wiggled around just like so. That will work. Alright guys, let me go ahead and tighten this one up and I'm going to do the same for our one ground wire that we got to do. Alright, got that. Went ahead and put the positive on here. Get all of them. Of course the ground is just sitting here, but I've got ground wire connected. I don't want to hot up anything as of yet until I get through with all of my electrical stuff. Now next we got this. Excuse me sir. My helper gets in the way sometimes. Okay, we got this wire for our amp, which is going to go. We'll just come around here ever so nicely and then go into here. All right. I'm going to cut it. What we'll do is just cut this. Now, guys, in order to get that screwed on there, I did have to take out the fuse and run a screw through there and also put some of that... Uh, 3M double sticky tape on the back because I didn't want to screw you know over time coming out and I made sure that plenty of that sticky tape got on that screw when I put it in there and there's a holder behind it so I was super safe on that one so that we wouldn't have any future problems I skin this back about this far wires twisted as well as I can. Okay, so it goes here behind that and then into the socket which is a Allen head. And you just tighten her down. And I always try to pull them out. Alright, and this also was pretty cool. Now I don't even know where it went. There it is. It did come with some wire line. So, since we know that's 100% where it's going to be, let's go ahead and wire line that bad boy. Where's some tight fitting wire line, ain't it? Plastic tie. If you don't use plastic ties, nothing will ever work. Alright, because that looks good. I like that. Now, that's going to take care of this stuff here. Uh, probably about the only thing I'll do. This red wire and this black wire, I've got a quarter inch wire loom. I'll probably cover them with a little tape on it, just for looks and a little extra protection. Uh, now we need to take our red cable and go from our fuse 
to inside the vehicle and run all of that. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get that done next. Alright, got that one in there. I've already got the cover snapped on and have it run through to the inside. Uh, just like I did with the uh, little handheld screen for the uh, EFI system. I just run it through right there where the speedometer cable is. That's a good grommet, plenty of room, and plenty to run through. So let me go ahead and uh, give me some of the black stuff on that wire, and then we'll head inside the truck and we'll route this power wire to where we think we're going to be putting our amp and sub. All right, we got that run up and over everything. and secure it up there on the firewall. No bullet, I don't need your help. And run behind the seat. Now we have to run our RCA cables and our blue wire to power up the amp. So I'm going to go ahead and get them done. It's just simply put the blue wire onto the blue wire on the radio. And the RCA plugs just jack up in the slides. But let me go ahead and get that knocked out. And then we'll get out our amp and see how it's going to fit back there and hook up okay. Alright, I get all of them ran, run down through by the tunnel. I use duct tape to put them down with, that old fine, because you got to think carpet's going right over it. But I don't want them getting down there where you're going to step on them. I have them running under the center of the seat and everything exiting back here. So now, Our little lamp set up here. I think this thing's pretty cool. Sound ordinance. Auto power, remote wire. Yeah, we're on remote wire. So all your adjustments. It's just basically a little sub amp combo. Oh, what we got here? Your basic ground, remote, and hot fuse. And then we're using these two here for the input. And we do have the remote for it. Yeah, a little base remote. That's pretty cool. We're going to run it up and hide it inside of here. And also, we need to install our ground wire. Let's uh, try to figure out where we're going to set this thing behind the seat. I mean, it won't be installed right now, but we need to get everything set up for it. So, after we put the carpet in, we can install it. Alright guys, we've got our end zone. We've got a ground. We've got our hot. And our remote wires. So, now all we need to do is hook up the amp. I'm going to leave these long, just in case he wants to move this thing someday. Then he has the option to do that. Now, yes, I know. Or some of y'all throw down in the comments that I did not have to put ends on these. I could have just shoved the wire up in there and screwed them down. That is true, but I always think it's better doing it this way right here. It's like every time you go cram the wires in there and put a screw in, it starts coming loose later on. And uh, we don't need that headache. So, in my opinion, take the time, put you some ends on there, and get it how it's supposed to go. And of course, our ground, we're going to have to drill a hole in the floor, uh, clean off some paint, what have you, make us a nice clean spot and bolt this in for a good ground to the bottom. Let me show you who's really hard at work here. Yeah. He's just taking it easy and that's what he needs to do. So 
we got everything, not everything. Where did our... Floorboard before they fall. It goes with all of this stuff. There it is. Oh, yeah, it's knotted up really good now. This is that remote. this thing pretty much anywhere he wants. And what I think I'm going to do, since there is, there's no way to mount this. There's no mounting holes there. There might be some brackets, I'll check. But what I was thinking about doing once the carpet's down, just uh, put me three or four strips of Velcro on this thing and set it in place. It did come with old down brackets. Got two of these, and what I'm assuming is you just figure out where you want it. It's got some padding to go in here too. And you just take it, put it in there like that, and screw it down to your floor. Well that ain't bad, but I reckon some people might be thinking the same way that I was. It also came with a strip of Vel Velcro. So, what I think I'm going to do is try the Velcro first after we get the carpet in and just see how that holds. I think that'll do the trick and we've got to keep, you know, putting holes in the carpet, putting holes in the floor. But yeah, that's hooked up. Of course, I can't play it right now. Even if I could play it right now, I can't play it right now. Anything I play on the radio, or any CD I play, bam, I'll be hit because I can't play somebody else's music on YouTube. So, sorry y'all don't get to hear it, but at least you know how the operation was done, except for the setting it down part. Like I say, we'll probably just Velcro that. But, let's move on to something else. Well, guys, looks like we're going to have to wrap it up for this week. I just plain out ran out of time. This week it seemed like we just didn't get a ton done, but I was busy doing a lot of other stuff as well. As I explained in the video on the gun channel, I've been stretching myself pretty thin here nowadays. But at least we did get some work done and it was good work, and we're going to get back on it today and next week and see what we can get done. And we're also working on the EFI install part 2 video as well. And so everybody knows, let's check up on our favorite employee right quick who's still in the shop this morning. There's a Mr. Bullet. Say hi to everybody, Mr. Bullet. And as you can tell, Mr. Spooled Rotten is doing just fine. Yes, doing very well. Well, everyone, I appreciate you watching the video. Hope you're enjoying the work that we're doing on the Warlock truck. I know we are. It is a really cool project. Well, if you would, throw us down some comments. Uh, if you're able, hit that super thanks below. And please, like, share, and subscribe. Again, appreciate it much. Till the next one, we hope that everyone has a fantastic day.